Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we finished up some business in the Reach, went to Lustrum and helped the Tacades construct their new ship. Uh, about to leave the Reach for Albion. But before that, I'm at New Winchester right now, and I noticed there's a new thing here related to the ship we just helped build. The Ride of the Liberties. The Tacity pubs buzz with excitement. The development of, the, of a new Liberator class of locomotive is complete. The new engines have already been sighted in the skies, often in the company of the smaller Tacity scouts, which use them for refuel and resupply. Listen to the conversation. Learn what you can about the Tacity's new weapon in the Winchester War. You gather they are sluggish and heavy, much more resilient than their smaller cousins, the scouts. A blistered engineer claims to have seen one in action, engaging marauders in the paths of traitor's wood. Don't get around the side of him, is all he will say, unless you like being boiled like a sardine in a can. The side of them? So their flamethrowers are on the sides of them, not on the front? Okay, well I'm gonna head on over to... Uh Hmm. I'm actually going to stop at Magdalene's first, just to get rid of one more Nightmares, since I have so many points of inspiration, and then head over to Albion. At Magdalene's. Keepsake Market. Let's while away the time with other captains to reduce my terror. It's at 30%. Now at 5. Treat my Nightmares. What is it going to cost now? It's going to cost all six moments of inspiration. Ouch. It's all right. I have enough visions of heavens to get quite a few more points of inspiration. I'm going to go back to Eleutheria. My nightmares are now zero. Untroubled. For the first time in a long time. It's amazing how quickly they get out of control. At first it felt like... Yeah, I'll just increase my nightmares, whatever, one moment of inspiration to go reduce it. But when it starts costing six, that's hard to deal with. Ooh, this is a bad scene to just come across. A couple cantankery and a guest tackety. I didn't think that hit me. Fuck. At least this new weapon makes it a lot easier to fight them. Oh, I think they changed that weapon. The one that they just shot, spitting out the goo. I, I think they might have changed that because it seems to be tracking me a lot more aggressively. Do you see how much it bent to try to hit me? Yeah, that one. Look at that. Huh. This might give me... Yes! This gives me the option to create the guest-created weapon. The one you need to gather a certain amount of guests to get. Well, off-camera, I've been getting guests every now and then. I finally have enough. Create the uninvited. I need... I need 25 captive guests, I have 34. I need a condemned experiment, I have 5. Gather one more handful of guests and you'll have enough for a weapon. Like mother yeast, the colony will keep reproducing. It will have endless ammunition. This will give you a large weapon that you can equip while in dock or sell to an equipment shop. I think somebody told me that I can't equip this. I think it requires hearts or something like that. Cool image for the weapon. After one last trip for a fistful of oozing, budding guests, you order the crew to leave you undisturbed. You have a weapon to build. You won't fire the guests themselves. That would be mad. Instead, you'll milk their secretions and project globs of it through a pressurized launcher. Your crew are horrified, but they need not fear. You show them how to placate the guests with gifts of egg cups, lockets, cufflinks, and other knickknacks. Preferably ones that were once gifts or mementos. 
that's what the guests are attracted to. Things with like personal attachment kind of like imbued in them. Creepy things. I also wanted to bring you back because I'm almost at the Braley Rock, which we've investigated once before in the last episode, I think. I'm sure enough time has passed for us to investigate it again. Let's take a look at the weapon. Oh, no, I can actually use it. Hearts at 25 plus. I've got that. I think just through bonuses, probably. Yeah, I just have 20 by default, but plus 8. Only a tier 2, though. I don't think it's very good. The cannons have their bowels full of wrath, and ready mounted are they to spit forth. This heavy custom weapon fires triple gobbets of gunge, machine milked from imprisoned guests. It must be mounted in a large weapon slot. It's got a decent range. Like 750, that's the same as my Vala, my secondary weapon. It's got a pretty good damage to heat ratio. 30 damage, 40 heat. 18 damage, 25 heat. 20 damage, 60 heat. This one's kind of an exception. Hmm. Fires triple gobbets. Triple. So is the damage then all of the three different uh, projectiles combined? Or is that what each one will do? If it's each one, then that could be actually extremely good. I doubt it would be that good though, right? It's only a tier two. I just looked up the patch notes for the Vagabond update that came out recently. And uh, everybody, or everybody, not like there's been a huge group talking about it, but the comment that I saw saying that it's a bad weapon is definitely out of date because they actually buffed it quite a bit in the patch. They both increased the damage and decreased the heat. Still, it can't be that good if it's tier 2. No way. I'm still going to try it though, of course. Hell yeah. Let's check out Braley Rock. The lanterns have been recently lit. Huh, I wonder how long it takes them to go out. Okay, so I can't do that, but I can mine for unclaimed hours using my munitions. 100% chance of success. Stored deep within the rocks are the hours the miners didn't live to reach. Two barrels of unseasoned hours. The rock is pockmarked with earlier attempts. Most tunnels have collapsed, but you find one that is intact. Armed with pick and lantern, you crawl into the fossil deep. To your dismay, you discover Cantankery sleeping over the geodes of ours, as though incubating eggs. Mufflers and nerves of steel are required to uncouple the two. Happily, you possess both. Squeezing between the heaving bulks of slumbering Cantankery, you make your way back. Your crew almost cheer when you return triumphant, but thankfully they remember where they are. <laughs> Let the Cantankery sleep. Shh. Docking at Port Prosper, there's a London Monitor and I think some other fighting ships too, just right in front of here. So let's use that to test out the weapon, huh? Is there anything to get here? I guess Ministry approved literature. Let's not buy that just yet. Let's just switch out the thing. And get a board report if I can. Performance of the Gaudy Widow. Enjoy myself. I succeeded at enjoying myself. Good. I'm embraced by the impoverished EastEnders. I guess I still have a port report. Oh, we can offer transport to another settler. Not that that really matters. Not that I'm ever going to get them to their destination, like, ever. Alright, let's see how this thing is. Okay, so it's just like that weapon that they shoot, the guests. So I... Th mm, does it... does it say blast? It doesn't mention blast damage. 
but it sounds like it's almost like an AoE where each of them explode. Doesn't it look like an area of effect type thing? It's obviously extremely inaccurate, but I imagine it might actually be devastating up close if you can get every one of those projectiles to hit. Let's go try it out. Gonna have to dodge some snipes from a London monitor though. There you are. Pretty good. But I mean, you know, that's an enemy that specifically is very weak on its side and has a very, like, it's like shooting a barn, you know? Shooting the broadside of a barn. It's a big target. Um, I don't want to take contraband with me. So, look for Ministry Secrets. Oh, right. Let's assemble a dossier of blackmail material. Get a mysterious benefactor. In Albion now, after I went through the relay, I realized I might as well go to the floating parliament and try to pass another law. It's quite close to the relay. I wanted to do that before heading to London. And I just came across a marauder and wanted to show you how this weapon fares against a different type of enemy. Yeah, up close, it's good. I mean, it's like a really good shotgun. But it's just, you know, it's a shotgun. It's not good from afar. It has a decent range, but that's almost irrelevant because they have a pretty wide spread and they spread randomly too. Let's try another one. Try this more from afar. Yeah, sometimes they just don't go the direction you want. <laughs> like that? <laughs> Split directly around it. Ah, shit. Alright, let's get up and close. Yeah, it's a really good shotgun. But definitely not better than the Jubilee in terms of just overall usability and, and how safe it keeps me during encounters. It's a really cool weapon, though. It's really bizarre. At the floating parliament now. Let's switch out my weapon. Get some tear reduction. Report. Some more tear reduction. No, that's not the one that gives you a tear reduction. That gives you a sky story. Make a new law. Ooh, it is getting harder. 56% chance of success. And that's the only one I can do. Oh, thank God already hard enough. Oh, that didn't give me any support. Whoops. That didn't give me any support. Like compromising information in the press. Attempt to clear out the competition. Pick up dirt on a rival MP. I don't know if I want to do the same one back to back. I thought I, I I thought that in the past I thought that was a bad thing. I don't know if it is. Could have just been luck. 
Not scare the house with a tale of terror. Just something different. Half of Parliament. 52% chance of success. Wow. Three successes in a row. I'm transferred to the Department of Unusual Cartography. Cool. Oh, what is this? I think we might be moving up in the ranks. You have an important message waiting. Minister, the first secretary asked me to give you this. It comes scribbled in the margin of a document about wheat production written in sharp red capitals. Come see me at once. Most important. Albion must rise again. Bring black ink. The first secretary. Who's the first secretary? Are they here? Oh, you're the first secretary. Right. Discuss the future of Parliament. Ah, Minister, I have something I wish to show you. The First Secretary leads the way to the Prince's Chamber, where a statue of Victoria stands. The face has been chipped off. A rare survivor from before the fall of London, he sighs. When Britain was great. I had hoped Her Renewed Majesty's restoration of Parliament would mean a return to those days. Alas, as you've seen, it was a token gesture from an increasingly tyrannical monarch. He turns. I need you to present a law for me. The Dignity of Albion Bill. As a mere civil servant, I, I cannot do so myself. However, while I prepare the ground, I need your help with another matter. The Empress's royal astronomer is currently enjoying a forced vacation in Carillon. He's trustworthy. Take him to the great telescope of the Royal Society and request the final testament of the old sun. I know I speak in vagaries. I apologize, but it is necessary for all of our safety. All will be explained when you return. Hmm, there's a lot there. The dignity of Albion, Bill. I don't know, sounds like a load of shit, but uh, anyway, regardless, the Empress's royal astronomer has been forced to stay at Carillon. So, the royal astronomer seems to have gone a bit astray from the Empress. That's good. That's somebody I want to talk to. And also, they want to look through the telescope and request the final testament of the old sun. This sounds really important. Okay, yeah. Carillon. Well, shit, I guess I'm going back through the portal, huh? Portal. That's not what a relay is. Arrived at Carillon. Overgrown Shrine. Let's get rid of some terror. Rescue the Royal Astronomer. Hopefully he won't mind you interrupting his holiday. You find the astronomer in one of Kirillin's intensive therapy rooms, having the memories of a broken heart carefully milked from his tear ducts. <laughs> it's not hard to convince him to slip away from his attending devil's tender ministrations in favor of a little science. That was easier than I thought. I thought it'd be a whole thing. But now it's just like... Hey, come with me. Science. At London. Let's help the amiable vagabond plot an escape. The vagabond has managed to procure blueprints of the jail where Ratbite is being held. He's excitedly planning a pointlessly intricate scheme to get her out. It involves disguises, distractions, the extremely irresponsible misuse of hours, and two separate explosions. I can pull off. I can pull off a complex, ambitious heist, or just just use your connections to quash her trial. But if I succeed at this, it will improve my friendship with the vagabond. Oh, that sounds really fun and cool. Let's do it. Hundred percent chance of success. Barrel of unseasoned hours, a caged catch, and a sky story. There we 
it is. You sit down with the Vagabond and help turn his wild plans into something more feasible. Your heist proceeds without a hitch. By its end, there's a smoking hole in the side of the jail from which inmates scatter. Most of the guards are still attempting to exit their command post, slowed by a tide of hours. <laughs> and your caged catch, now uncaged, is rampaging in a manner likely to keep the rest of the guards thoroughly occupied. You and the Vagabond remove your disguises and burst into Ratbite's cell, dragging her from the smoke and the chaos. The Vagabond is racked with laughter as you return to the engine with Ratbite stumbling between you. <laughs> that was awesome. I especially love this image. Uh, most of the guards are still attempting to exit their command post, slowed by a tide of hours. I'm just imagining you just use your hours and then you're just watching the guards respond to this jailbreak and they're just like running, quote unquote, in slow motion. <laughs> the Vagabond's respect for you has grown. to rat bite over dinner. The jails in London have a cavalier approach to provisioning prisoners. Once she's eaten, she'll tell you about what she knows about quivers. You, rat bite, and the vagabond dine together. The vagabond is laughing ruckusly, telling horrible jokes. Rat bite says little. She's gaunt, hollow-eyed, all sharp angles and scars. Quivers was obsessed with fairy tales, she tells you. He said there were some Skylark signs scattered around the skies that no one knew the meaning of, not even the oldest Skylarks. He believed they'd lead him right to the Sugar Spun Garden if he could translate them. He pulls a, uh, she pulls a small notebook from her pocket. He left this with me. He'd collected all the undeciphered signs except one. Last I heard, he was headed to Ackley's to find it. Find the final untranslated Skylark sign in Ackley's. I wonder about this. These Skylark signs scattered around the skies that no one knew the meaning of. Are those actually Skylark signs? Maybe they were just mistaking correspondence for Skylark. If so, uh-oh. Maybe they learned more than they should know, and the fire that follows is coming for them. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to finish up my business in Albion, which is to go to the Royal Society and do the sun thing with the ex-royal astronomer that I broke out of Kirillin. And then I assume I'll probably have to go back to the floating parliament, but after I've dealt with that, it sounds like we're heading to the Reach.